in this lecture, you will learn about graphic design basics. To be a great designer, you must know the fundamentals of design. Do not be fooled by the word basic. This lecture will help you build depth, richness, and complexity around simple relationships in design. We will explore formal structures as well as experimental concepts in design, and hopefully this will resonate and give you a new meaning around the basics of graphic design. Let's start at the very basic design elements. Point, line, plane, color, grouping, and grid. From these simple elements, designers create images, icons, textures, patterns, diagrams, animations, and typographic systems. Every design you see is a result of the interaction of basic design elements. The first design element is a point. A point marks a position in space. In pure geometric terms, a point is a pair of x and y coordinates and it has no mass. However, graphically, a point takes from a dot and is a visible mark. It can be insignificant fleck or a powerful and significant focus of power. The point is where all design starts from and will end. A series of points become a line. A mass of points becomes a texture, a shape, or a plane. Tiny points of varying sizes create shades of gray, and in typography, the point is a period, the definitive end of a sentence and a line. Do not underestimate the power of a point in art and design. Yaya Kusama is a Japanese contemporary artist who works primarily in sculpture and installation. Kusama is best known for her mirror infinity rooms. In these complex infinity mirror installations, rooms are filled with mirrored glass and contain hundreds of neon colored balls hanging at various heights above the viewer. Standing inside on a small platform, an observer sees light repeatedly reflected off the mirrored surfaces to create the illusion of a never-ending space. Kusama states that a polka dot has the form of the sun, which is a symbol of energy of the whole world and our living life and also the form of the moon, which is calm. Round, soft, colorful, senseless, polka dots become movement. Polka dots are a way to infinity. Roy Lichtenstein was an American pop artist inspired by the comic strip. His work was influenced by popular advertising and the comic book style. His works feature the large-scale use of hard-edged figures and bende dots. The Bende process, named after illustrator and printer Benjamin Henry Day Jr., is a printing and photo engraving technique dating from 1879. While the Bende process is commonly described in terms of dots, other shapes may be used, such as parallel lines, textures, irregular effects, or wave lines. Lichtenstein is acknowledged as a foundational figure in the pop art movement. A famous graphic designer that utilized points is Susan Kerr. Kerr is one of the first pixel artists and designed the first icons, typefaces, and interfaces for Apple. Kerr states that good design is not about what medium you're working in. It's about thinking hard about what you want to do and what you have to work with before you start. The second design element is a line. A line is a series of points. A line is an infinite series of points. And geometrically, a line has length, but no breadth or depth. A line is a connection between two points or is the path of a moving point. A line can be a positive mark or a negative gap. Lines exist in many weights, the thickness and texture, as well as the path of a mark, determine its visual presence. Lines can be drawn with a pen, pencil, brush, mouse, or digital code. They can be straight or curved, continuous or broken. When a line reaches a certain thickness, it becomes a plane. Lines multiply to describe planes, textures, and volume. When a line rises or falls over time, it describes a change on a graph. Think of an electrocardiogram monitoring a heartbeat. In typography, the line is a baseline in which the text sits on, or the alignment of text, or even the elements of the letters themselves. Some artists that utilize line to create their works is Jackson Pollock. Abstract expressionist painter Jackson Pollock is quite possibly the most famous painter of movement. His method of painting was above all an action. The drips, dots, lines, and the different strokes applied from all different directions created a net and vibrant surface. 
the lines, the surface, the colors, all of this put together culminated in a pure expression of a single moment of creation. This example moves us far away from the understanding of traditional idea of line art and everything that line art can be. And it showcases that any mark the artist makes is an element of their art and that a line can be a grouping of dots, strokes, or even paint. Egon Schell creates a deeply psychological portraits and self-portraits and numerous drawings and studies of the human body, marked by one of the major shifts in art history. Schell's raw and direct production is famous and characteristic due to its graceful black line and the profound expression. Now considered as one of the most famous line artists, his paintings and drawings of the interlaced body express the idea that a single black line on a variety of surfaces can be viewed to stand as a sketch and as a finished work of art. Emery Douglas is an American graphic artist. He was a member of the Black Panther Party from 1967 until the party disbanded in the 1980s. As a revolutionary artist and the Minister of Culture for the Black Panther Party, Douglas created iconography to represent Black American oppression. His use of line and color, his revolutionary artwork, helped to educate repressed and suppressed communities of the time. The third design element is a plane. A plane is a flat surface extending into space. It is a conceptual area having both length and width, but no depth. Think of planes as the top layer of ceilings, walls, floors, and windows. They are a flat surface and two-dimensional. Text is a plane built from points and lines of type. A typographic plane can be dense or open. It can be experimental with line spacing, font size, and alignment to create different typographic shapes. This is an example of typography using ribbons of color to describe spatial planes. When a line closes, it becomes a shape, a bounded or closed plane. Shapes are planes with edges. In a vector-based program like Adobe Illustrator, every shape consists of a line and a fill. Now you may be a bit confused at this point. Planes and shapes sound like the same thing, but A shape is a visually defined or designated area that has two dimensions, a width and a height. That means it is a plane with a defined edge. It is a formal element of design and is not conceptual like a plane. When a shape takes on a three-dimensional space, it is said to be a form or have space and volume. Form is a visually defined area that has three dimensions. It takes up three-dimensional space and has volume, a height, width, and depth. Form has volume and is the three-dimensional expression of shape. A form is the total of all its shapes. A cube is a three-dimensional expression of a square. Each square of a cube can be sliced up in any direction into a series of planes. With the exception of a sphere, which has no planes, the shape of the form changes depending on the point of view. And once you have a shape or form, you can apply texture. Texture is a tactile grain of surfaces and substances. For designers, textures can be both physical and virtual. When something is printed, the physical texture of the paper will affect the design. Paper can be rough or smooth, and fabric can be rough or smooth, and packaging can be glossy or matte. Physical textures affect how a piece feels in the hand and affects how it looks. Virtual textures add detail or can add a mood, reinforce a point of view, or convey a sense of physical presence. The beauty in utilizing texture and design lies in the careful execution of contrast by placing one texture in contrast to its opposite texture, like hard and soft or smooth and torn. The designer can amplify the unique qualities of each texture. As a review for this third design element, the plane, A plane is a flat surface extending into space. It is a conceptual area having both length and width, but no depth. When planes are bounded or closed, they are shapes. Shapes have a width and height only. And when they have a height, width, and depth, or are 3D, they are a form. And textures can be applied to any shape or form. The fourth design element is color. Color is a characteristic of visual perception described through color categories with names such as red, orange, yellow, green, blue, or purple. 
This perception of color derives from the stimulation of photoreceptor cells by electromagnetic radiation on your eye. Color has become an integral part of graphic design and learning how to master color will be the most vital thing that you can accomplish as a designer. It is said that all colors are the friends of their neighbors and the lovers of their opposites, and it is true. Strong color contrast or complementary color combinations or colors opposite each other on the color wheel give high visual energy to any design and provide visual balance. Value is the light or dark character of a color is the color itself. Shade is adding black to a color. Tint is adding white to a color. And saturation is the presence of a color as it neutralizes to gray. And a color changes as it interacts with different colors. In graphic design, we are going for a balanced contrast, meaning that the contrast that is the easiest to see as well as provides the most balance in our design. As you can see, the neutral tone passing through the squares takes on a different hue or value in each square. The left has high contrast, the middle has low contrast, and the right has balanced contrast. And when two colors are very close in value to each other, it produces a glowing effect. On the left, the green seems luminous and unstable, and on the right, the green appears darker. And by adding a darker color interwoven within a color, the color appears overall darker, and the opposite happens when you interweave a lighter color. Some artists that utilize color theory predominantly in their work is Joseph Albers. Albers is a contemporary artist that worked in the 1960s and 70s, and is best known for his color studies and his paintings that mix color, different values playing with contrast, and a luminosity of different colors when placed next to each other. Albert's hard edge paintings portray how the perception of color can change when placed against other colors. Marsha Hafif, a California artist, was known for her paint studies and monochromes. Hafif committed to the process-oriented monochrome painting, working in a range of hues on serialized color canvases that continue the medium-specific advance. The artist mixed her own oil paints, which are less consistent than commercial versions, and enabled her to create subtle gradients and tensions among hues. A graphic designer that has clear mastery of color is Jessica Walsh. Walsh started her career interning at Pentagram under Polisher and has contributed work for Levi's, Adobe, and Print Magazine. She now owns her own design firm called And Walsh. The fifth design element is grouping. Grouping serves to both combine and separate. By combining elements, it transforms multiple design elements into something that visually speaks as one shape or element. And as a process of separating, grouping serves to break down more complex objects into simpler visual elements. Psychologists have identified various principles of grouping. The six common ones are shown here. Designers often manipulate one or more principles of grouping in order to create images or compositions. Let's break down each type of grouping. Good figure or simplicity refers to objects that are grouped together tend to be perceived as a single figure. In the image, we see mountains instead of two triangles. When shapes are grouped together, our mind reads them as one subject or object. Proximity principle states that the human eye tends to perceive objects that are placed together to be more related than the ones far apart. Even if there are more objects, the ones that are closer seem to be more related than elements that are placed further. Our brains perceive these sets of closely placed elements as groups. Proximity is so essential to our perception that it is stronger than other features like shape or color. For designers, proximity may be used to group content and action controls that are related to each other. In the end, users are able to scan content faster and accomplish their goals more efficiently. Similarity principle states that the human eye tends to leak similar elements within a composition. This is the grouping element of pattern recognition. Utilizing patterns in design is a powerful element in the design world and should not be overlooked. By grouping elements by color, shape, or even similar spacing, you can help your viewer perceive your design more effectively. Continuation principle states that the human eye tends to follow a continuous path, be it lines, curves, or intersections. When the eye is guided to move from one object to another, we speak about the law of continuity. Our perception tends to see objects arranged in lines or curves as more related or grouped. 
When you see groups of elements like photo gallery, sliders, tabs, or even simple lists, you may now notice they are using continuation. The objects are placed nearby and they guide the eyes to jump from one to the next. Closure principle states that the human eye tends to complete the missing part in a design. Objects are often perceived as a whole thing, even when they are incomplete. Our mind quickly fills in the gaps and helps us find meaning and intention of a particular design. The other usage of closure is negative space. We see it in logos and iconography where designers utilize your mind to fill in the gaps of a design. Symmetry principle states that the human eye tends to prefer a design where elements are made up of equivalent parts. An example of symmetry would be how humans have two equivalent elements like eyes, ears, hands, and legs forming symmetry. The goal is to bring balance to compositions using symmetry. Our mind perceives symmetrical objects as part of the same group. They create an impression of stability and order. For more research into grouping and also where this concept comes from, look into Gestalt principles. Gestalt principles are principles or laws of human perception that describe how humans group similar elements, recognize patterns, and simplify complex images when we perceive objects. Designers use the principles to organize content on websites and other interfaces so it is aesthetically pleasing and easy to understand. And you're probably already familiar with Gestalt principles. If you've ever seen an image that tricks the eye with a figure and ground demonstration, it was a Gestalt principle being implemented. Also on the right is the M.C. Escher print, an artist that is very well known for implementing this principle. The sixth design element is a grid. A grid is a network of lines. The line in a grid typically run horizontal and vertical in evenly spaced increments, but grids can be angled, irregular, or even circular as well. Embracing a grid may seem foreign in the beginning to a designer. Our designs are supposed to be inspired, not put into grids or boxes, but grid systems can help and create balanced designs that communicate our vision more clearly. Grids offer designs a way to organize elements and information in our designs more effectively. Grids significantly improve design. Grids can organize content, allow for flexibility, and enhance your graphics as shown in the golden rule of thirds pictured. And a proposed seventh element in the age of digital design is movement. In classical or more static design methods, movement can be implied, but objects cannot move. Movement can be applied to line, shapes, form, and textures, and can even move objects in space. This is particularly useful because it allows your forms or shapes to take on a personality or tell a story in your designs. An example as a static medium is a cartoon where an artist has created the perception of movement with action lines or blurred areas. Movement can also be applied to physical experiences where users interact with their space like virtual reality. Thank you for joining me in this lecture on design elements. Each element is foundational in all types of art and design. As we progress in our design practices, returning to the basics will always produce better designs and help us find innovation and inspiration for new designs. Try using some of the, of the elements you learned today in your work to enhance and improve your designs. Thanks again and see you next time.